mode. Welcome to Zika Virus Basics, a presentation brought to you by the New Jersey Department of Health. <clears throat> First, we will start off with what Zika virus is. Zika is a viral infection caused by the bite of an infected mosquito. We are presenting this information because there have been reports of a serious birth defect of the brain called microcephaly and other poor pregnancy outcomes in babies of mothers who were infected with Zika while pregnant. Prior to 2015, Zika virus outbreaks have occurred in areas of Africa, Southeast Asia, and the Pacific Islands. Zika is not a new virus and was first discovered in mosquitoes in Zika Forest, Uganda in 1948. The virus was detected in humans in Nigeria in 1954. Until recently, outbreaks have mostly occurred in Africa and Asia. The first outbreak outside of Africa and Asia occurred on the island of Yap in the Federated States of Micronesia in 2007. In May 2015, Brazil reported the first outbreak of Zika in the Americas. Zika is now present in many tropical areas. Since this is an evolving situation, the list of affected countries is likely to change. For up-to-date lists of countries, please visit the CDC website at www.cdc.gov slash Zika slash index dot html or the Pan American Health Organization website at www.paho.org. While the U.S. is home to the type of mosquito that transmits Zika, a widespread outbreak is not expected. If U.S. mosquitoes become infected with the virus, it will likely result in localized outbreaks, which can be controlled through good surveillance and mosquito control efforts. Additionally, in the U.S., there was widespread use of window screens and air conditioning, which reduce exposure to mosquitoes. The CDC's assumption is based on studies of other mosquito-borne diseases, such as dengue and chikungunya, that had localized transmission in the U.S. but did not expand to large, uncontrollable outbreaks. Although Zika is new to the Americas and spreading fast in the region, countries are responding proactively with support from the Pan American Health Organization and the World Health Organization. Now we are going to spend some time talking about what the disease is and how it behaves in the population. It is very important to understand that Zika virus is still being studied and more is being learned each day. The information you hear today may change as the CDC learns more and makes new recommendations, so be sure to check the New Jersey Department of Health website and the CDC website often to see the most up-to-date information. The good news is that only about one in five people with Zika develop symptoms and infection is usually mild. The most common symptoms are fever, rash, joint pain, or red eyes. Other common symptoms include muscle pain and headache. Symptoms usually begin two to seven days after being bitten by an infected mosquito and last several days to a week. Hospitalization and deaths from Zika are rare. Zika is spread to people through the bite of an infected Aedes mosquito. This is the same mosquito that spreads dengue and chikungunya. Zika virus has been found in semen and can be spread from person to person through sexual activity. Although there have been reports of Zika being spread through sexual activity, more study is being done to learn more about this mode of transmission. Also, there have been reports of Zika being spread through blood transfusions, and more is being learned about this as well. However, mosquito bites are the main way that people become infected. Zika is not an airborne disease and cannot be spread by coughing, sneezing, or talking. This means that it's okay to be around people who may have been infected or who may have symptoms of the illness. You cannot catch Zika through the air.
An incubation period is the time from when a virus gets inside someone's body to the time symptoms begin showing. Most people who are infected with Zika will begin to show symptoms within two to seven days after being bitten by an infected mosquito. As Zika can result in some serious problems for a pregnant mother's unborn child, so the next few slides will focus on considerations for pregnancy. While the CDC is still studying the effects of Zika in pregnant women, there are some things that are already known. Zika can be spread from a pregnant woman to her unborn baby. There have been reports of a serious birth defect of the brain called microcephaly and other poor pregnancy outcomes in babies of mothers who were infected with Zika while pregnant. Children born with microcephaly will face various developmental disabilities. Microcephaly is a condition where a baby's head is much smaller than expected. Microcephaly can occur because a baby's brain has not developed properly during pregnancy or has stopped growing after birth, which results in a smaller head size. The data to provide evidence linking Zika and babies born with small heads and potential brain damage are not yet conclusive. Until we better understand the association between Zika and poor pregnancy outcomes, the CDC advises several special precautions. Women who are pregnant in any trimester should postpone travel to any area where Zika virus transmission is ongoing. If you must travel to one of these areas, talk to your doctor first and strictly follow steps to prevent mosquito bites during your trip. Men who live in or travel to areas of active Zika virus transmission who have a pregnant partner should abstain from sexual activity or be sure to consistently and correctly use condoms during sex, including vaginal intercourse, anal intercourse, or fellatio, also known as oral sex, for the duration of the pregnancy. Men who live in or travel to an area of active Zika transmission who are concerned about sexual transmission of Zika virus to a non-pregnant partner might consider abstaining from sexual activity or using condoms consistently and correctly during sex. Women who are trying to become pregnant before you travel, talk to your doctor about your plans to become pregnant and the risk of Zika virus infection, and also strictly follow steps to prevent mosquito bites during your trip. Since this is an evolving situation, testing guidance for Zika virus is subject to change. It is recommended to talk to your local health department or health care provider regarding the most up-to-date Zika testing information. The next topic we are going to talk about is prevention. No vaccine or preventive drug is available at this time, so prevention is important. The best way to prevent Zika is to avoid mosquito bites when traveling to an area where Zika is present. Use an EPA-registered insect repellent. Many insect repellents are safe for pregnant women and children to use, but be sure to check the product label for any warnings and follow the instructions closely. For information on how to best be protected against all diseases related to travel, visiting a clinician with expertise in travel medicine is recommended before a planned trip. If you have Zika, avoid mosquito bites for the first week of your illness. During the first week of infection, Zika virus can be found in your blood and passed from you to another mosquito through mosquito bites. An infected mosquito can then spread the virus to other people. As we said earlier, the situation is changing and the CDC is still learning more about this virus. It's important to know where you can find correct, updated information about Zika. Here are some organizations that will have updated, reliable information. Credible sources include national and international resources such as the CDC, the Pan American Health Organization, and the World Health Organization, as well as state and public health agencies. Use caution when obtaining information from social media and even news websites. These sites are not always monitored and the information may not be correct. Myths and rumors spread quickly online, so always, always be sure to utilize credible and trustworthy sources. If you'd like to get information through social media, follow us on Twitter and our Facebook page. At Twitter, you can find us at NJ. D-E-P-T of 
health and our Facebook page is facebook.com slash N-J-D-E-P-T of health. Since Zika is not a disease that is familiar to us in the United States, it is only natural that people will have questions and concerns. Some of the questions people have been asking frequently include, who is at highest risk for getting infected with Zika? Anyone who is living in or traveling to an area where Zika is found who has not already been infected with Zika is at risk for infection, and this includes pregnant women. What should I know about Aedes mosquitoes? Aedes mosquitoes transmit Zika, chikungunya, and dengue. They are outdoor and indoor daytime biters and are strongly attracted to bite humans. These mosquitoes use both natural habitats and artificial containers to breed. The map on the left shows the distribution of two different Aedes mosquitoes in the United States. Aedes aegypti on the left and Aedes albopictus on the right. Currently, only Aedes aegypti is known to spread Zika. This species is not currently established in New Jersey. However, it is possible that other species of mosquitoes have the ability to spread Zika, including Aedes albopictus, which we do have in New Jersey. What is the difference between Zika, chikungunya, and dengue? All these diseases present similar symptoms, but certain symptoms suggest one disease or another and help doctors make a diagnosis. Dengue usually presents with higher fever and more severe muscle pain. Locations when the fever breaks. Attention should be paid to warning signs such as bleeding. Chikungunya presents with a higher fever and more intense joint pain affecting the hands, feet, knees, and back. It can disable people, bending them over so that they cannot walk or perform simple actions such as opening a water bottle. Zika does not have clearly characteristic features, but most patients have skin rashes and some have conjunctivitis or red eyes. How is Zika treated? There is no specific treatment or vaccine for Zika. Symptoms are treated by getting rest, drinking fluids to prevent dehydration, and taking medicines such as acetaminophen or paracetamol to relieve fever and pain. Aspirin and other non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs like ibuprofen and naproxen should be avoided until dengue can be ruled out to reduce the risk of increased bleeding. Can I travel to countries affected by the outbreak? Since Zika is spread by mosquitoes, CDC recommends that travelers to areas with ongoing transmission protect themselves from mosquito bites. Women who are pregnant in any trimester should consider postponing travel to any area where Zika transmission is ongoing. If you are pregnant and must travel to one of these areas, talk to your doctor first and strictly follow steps to prevent mosquito bites during your trip. Women who are trying to become pregnant should talk to their doctor about plans to become pregnant and the risk of Zika virus infection before travel and strictly follow steps to prevent mosquito bites during travel. What are EPA registered insect repellents? Insect repellents registered by the Environmental Protection Agency or the EPA indicate that the materials and active ingredients have been reviewed and approved for human safety and effectiveness when applied according to instructions on the label. Insect repellents registered by the EPA will say EPA registered on the product label. Please remember that all insect repellents should be used according to instructions on the label. Many insect repellents are safe for pregnant women and children to use, but be sure to check the product label for any warnings and follow the instructions closely. Is it safe to get pregnant after traveling to a country with Zika? If infected, Zika virus usually remains in the blood of an infected person for about a week. The virus will not cause infections in a baby that is conceived after the virus is cleared from the blood. Can Zika be spread through breastfeeding? To date, there are no reports of infants getting Zika through breastfeeding. Because of the benefits of breastfeeding, mothers are encouraged to breastfeed even in areas where Zika virus is found. Mothers who are breastfeeding in areas where Zika virus is found should place 
should practice mosquito prevention measures such as using insect repellents. Again, a widespread Zika outbreak in the U.S. is not expected. Zika is not airborne and cannot be spread by coughing, sneezing, or talking. The only way to prevent Zika is to avoid being bitten by a mosquito carrying the disease. Everyone traveling to an area with ongoing transmission of Zika should protect themselves from mosquito bites. We cannot emphasize enough that women who are pregnant in any trimester should consider postponing travel to any area where Zika transmission is ongoing. Women who must travel and women planning to become pregnant should talk to their doctor. What is the CDC doing about Zika? <clears throat> CDC has been aware of Zika for some time and has been preparing for its possible introduction into the United States. Laboratories in many countries have been trained to test for chikungunya and dengue. These skills have prepared these laboratories for Zika testing. CDC is working with international public health partners and with state health departments to alert healthcare providers and the public about Zika, to provide state health laboratories with diagnostic tests, and to detect and report cases which will help prevent further spread. What is New Jersey doing about Zika? The New Jersey Department of Health is communicating with local health departments and healthcare providers through health alert messages and conference calls to increase their awareness. Updated information will be posted to the New Jersey Department of Health website as updates become available. You can learn more about Zika by visiting the CDC website or calling the CDC hotline at one 800 232-4636. They also have a TTY line, 888-232-6348. And once again, you can also check the New Jersey Department of Health website. Thank you for listening to this presentation.